Hey, it's Andy. Uh, today, I'm going to be rebuilding my 96 Kubota B1700 front end loader. Uh, the loader itself is an LA301. Uh, I know some people hate it when you get uh, into a YouTube video and there's already parts all taken apart, but I will describe the order in all which this came together. Um, uh, this is like my 12th time trying to record this. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know I pretty much do them in one take. There's very little editing. I want to get the information out there. I'm not trying to be a YouTuber, fancy editing and stuff. Let me get you some more of the uh, information you need, maybe a little comedy in there, and uh, probably some rambling stories too. So, anyway, you got to get the cylinders off. To do that, you knock the cotter pin out and you take the main pins out. The big pin, in my particular case here, it's the bucket cylinders. The big pin was down on the bucket, and the tiny pin was up top so I'm gonna try to jump back in here cool anyway another side note first time using a chest harness and I'm kind of watching through the viewfinder and apparently I need to turn the camera back on every one minute so you take your cylinder off the cylinder is gonna have in the end here it's gonna be the gland end and you remove that using a gland nut spanner tool in my case here, let me get it up close to the camera. I have no idea if it focuses or not. These are turned down. I'm fortunate enough to have a lathe, but if I was in a jam, I would take this Allen screw out, take the pin out, put it in a cordless drill, spin it, and use a bench grinder, maybe a Dremel, maybe even an angle grinder, to grind opposite of the way you're turning it and kind of use it like a grinding lathe. You can then, carefully with your hand, grind these pins down the size. In this case, the pin is, turn the camera back on, a 150, 150 on the dot. And I made these 140, 143. So gives it a little bit of shake to get in there. You don't need it line on line. Stick it in there, uh, proper threads. So curl lefty loosey. Uh, it wasn't terrible to, to break free. I did it in the bench vise. I didn't need some fancy jig or anything to hold it. I would not clamp on the, uh, don't clamp on the hose, the, the hose fittings. They're just welded on here. You don't want to get into that. So, all right. Then the assembly is going to look something like this. Okay. And... So, when you slide this out of the bore, it's going to be covered in oil. You're going to get oil all on the pan. Dripping covered in oil, you're going to find yourself with this. you got your gland nut on this end. And the piston down here and a nut on the end. The nut is 28 millimeter breaker bar. Uh, I clamped this in the vise. Don't clamp on the chrome. You don't want to screw the chrome up. If you absolutely have to, I'm fairly certain from this line down, never goes into the cylinder. It's actually longer than the bore, but it's best not to get corrosion on this anyway, so I clamped it right here in the vise. So, you crack the nut free, it will be hard coming off, same thing, standard thread. Nut comes off, like I said, it's hard because this is a, um, it appears to be a deformed lock nut. So, it'll const it's kind of like a nylock nut, but it'll be constant pressure until you get off to the last threads. This is the piston end, which comes off. And then you can slide off your gland. Now, let's talk about the piston end. The order of things is the wiper seal, the shaft seal on the ID, and then this large O-ring, a backup ring, and a smaller but chubby O-ring there. So, and we're back on. What do we got in the kit? I'm going to take some things and I'll show you. I'll put them back. First thing in here, we have the wiper seal. Mine came out in pieces. So we'll toss that back in the bag. Next, we have the lip seal inside. In my particular case, this side has the text on it is up 
and that kind of jives with standard hydraulic procedure. You want the lip towards the pressure. So this, the oil is trying to escape this way, and you have a lip not only on the OD, but the ID as well. So I had to take, the reason I have two cylinders out, I'd recommend doing them in one, uh, one at a time because you can always go back and reference the other one if you have to, and that's why I have these both out because I had to take the other one apart to verify that the lip goes down. So it's like, it's like this, inside, right? The text is up here. And I got this fancy tool on Amazon. It's like an O-ring flipper. You stick it in the seal here, and then when you turn this thing around, you do it the wrong way. You turn it this way. All right. And then you turn this thing around. What it does... Oh, come on. I am absolutely doing this wrong, even though I've already done it right twice. Oh, I apologize. You stick it in like this. Yes. You stick it in like this. Watch this. Oh, come on. There we go. This little thing now can fit in the bore here. And then you let it go, and it flops back into the hole. This is one of the small ones. They they list. It was like 30 bucks for them. Is it worth nicking one of these seals to try to put it in with a screwdriver? The kit was $55. So... Uh, no, I'll use the tool. I'll probably be doing this again at some point. Maybe not on this machine, but more machines. Next, we got the backup ring and the larger, the larger, smaller ring. Let's see. Oh, here we go. The 133 by, I don't know, 520, 525. That goes in there. If it matches the size of the orange one, it goes in here. Backup rings go on the opposite side of pressure. It's to help to keep from uh, the O-ring extruding through the gap. You know, you can look here. There's a gap maybe 50 thou, 40 thou, and it might want to push past it, but the backup ring helps it. The largest O-ring in the kit is this one for the uh, un above the threads to keep all the, the schmoo out. That's all set with that. And then this, we have the uh, wear plastic. I don't know if it's a phenolic or some sort of other glass-filled thing. Uh, it's probably not glass, actually, if it's rubbing in a bunch of junk. But it's got a little texture to it. Um, that snaps in this large area. Put that one away. And then we're down to the last couple here. This is one threw me for a loop. I had to call Messix and find out. If you really look in here, see how the O-ring's inside? It goes O-ring, and then the orange thing, over the top of it. So it's actually stacked up. It's it's O-ring, and then the, the rectangles above it. If you, you know, as a matter of fact, let me draw this out. So if you got the, the cross-section of your groove here, right? You got a groove that looks like, like this inside the cylinder. The O-ring goes here, you know, and then, I guess the, these are a little taller, this the cylinder ring goes above it. And I actually have one of those in this jig. And I'll get to the jig in a second. So they tell you, do not just roll this over the edge. Like most of us would. You'd kind of put it up here. You'd kind of smear it around. But there's there's a reason for this. Remember, what's holding up all your loader and bucket pressure is, is this OD. All right? It seals the ID because there's already uh, an O-ring in there. But... All of that's riding on this one little spot. So they double bag them for that reason. Keep these the same. You'll notice it's the one that fits just inside the orange one. Um, you know, if you drop them both on the table, you'll notice that the the one that goes on the piston is a little thinner here. And the O-ring that matches it, this O-ring here, matches it exactly because it's, it's stacked like a backup. This one, however fits inside of it, you see? Alright. The jig. Let me try to push this out. I have no idea how it's going to go because I put this in there like 20 minutes ago. And, uh... Nice! Wow! Oh, 
Oh man, that did work good. That's the first time taking that out. I'm not even exaggerating. All right. How this thing works, right? In the workshop service manual provided by Kubota for the LA301 loader and a whole bunch of others, there's a nice pictorial section here of the slide jig and the, correct, the correcting jig. The dimensions form are right here. I have an LA301. I use these dimensions. I also have a 3D printer. So instead of turning one, I made one on here. Uh, it's a little different than the picture because obviously it's longer, but you can see here like G, the old, the G dimension is 3.937 tall. Yeah, that's how big this is. I am going to make these available, both the sliding jig and the correction jig, available on Thingiverse and on my website. Uh, you should be di you'll be able to download them. If you really get jammed up and you need a set and you don't have a 3D printer, please message me. Find, you know, go to, go to the Leftfield Engineering website, contact me through the contacts page. I'm sure I can try to come up with a way to get you these, these jigs, print them out or something. So, as you can tell down here from the picture, that the sliding jig, which is, uh, this, it's gonna, I'm gonna list it under this number plus a bunch of other stuff, but it's gonna be the 12010F00760 for the slide jig. Uh, and the same number, but ending in 770 instead of 670 for the correction jig. So the whole purpose of these things, as it shows down here, is you got to get this, this like, Teflon O-ring or whatever down. Now, it is stretchy, but I wouldn't just pull on it because you break this thing, you're going to be doing it for 50 bucks. So the jig, put a little petroleum jelly grease on it or whatever. And you slide it down over here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it on this one. So, got my workshop jelly here. We'll go leftover stuff from the medicine cabinet. All right, let's just put a little bit on here, just enough to help it down. You know, they actually call out a surface finish on here, an 80 surface finish on the, the print. And... Well, I can tell you right now, 3D print is not that 80 surface finish. But, let's see if we can do this here. It's kind of hard with the chest harness, but I'm going to give it a go. Kind of line it up on top. The trick is, you don't want to bend it or fold it, so. Oh, it does, it kind of just stretches out. And I'm on. Now I'm on. Now you can tell right now, this thing did not spring back. Look at it, it's all loose. You're like, there's no way that's going to fit on there. Here's where the correcting jig comes in. And I can't believe that. Like I said, I was genuinely shocked when I took this out. 10, 15 minutes ago, when I put this one in there, it looked like this. Look at how much play is in this O-ring. And yet, this jig is just a tapered bore. So like out here, I don't know, it's maybe inch, an inch and a half or something. And down here, it's like inch, you know, 375. Just saying. So... What I did, same thing, put a little petroleum jelly inside here, kind of make up for that, that terrible surface finish that the 3D print leaves, and then just kind of dropped it in there, kept it nice and square, it's not feeling rough or anything, and push it in, and I just left it in there like that, as a matter of fact, push it down a little more, obviously I don't want to rough up the side walls of this. This ceiling surface here is, is what's holding up the cylinder. You know, anything that leaks between the two, it's not going to be good. So, the other very interesting thing, and this is where I hit a little bit of a snag with Messix and with this kit. Now, my loader is serial number 1000, sorry, 10,000 and like 20. 10,022, something like that. It's pretty low. It made it seem like when I called my local dealer and Messix that like they made 30 or 50,000 of these things or 100,000 of them and that I think the serial number break is like 30,000 and up gets one kit. They must have used a different cylinder and 30,000 and below may use a different kit. So what I'm surprised about 
is what I'm surprised about. Oh, it appears I missed one earlier in this kit, and this is what we'll get to now. That little guy goes in there. I'll talk about that in a second. So, inside here, let me grab this other O ring. Look at the junk that came out of my other loader, or the out of these cylinders. These were the, the, this and this were the, the dirt wipers. Yep, those are wiping a lot of dirt. These are those blue things. We have a couple of backup rings. And more importantly is this O-ring right here. This is what I believe to be a O-22 standard O-ring. I'll tell you how I got there. At work, we have an O-ring chart, and uh, of course, it's an all—it's an American O-ring chart. But this is a one-inch shaft. This is like nine nine eight nine nine nine. And if we look at the top of this, it says USA two W eight one dash four from SKF Bearing Company. So to me, this is a one-inch shaft, and this is an American O-ring. Back to this. This goes at the bottom. This seals the piston seal from the inside. So between the rod and the piston itself. Well, in my loader, I have a groove cut inside this piece. And this O-ring, this is the one that was formerly in here, fits like an absolute glove. So you see the O-ring sits in the groove, and then this, it seals against this shaft. I'm going to pull that off of there. Unfortunately, the kit that Messick's providing is part number 7536-7. Six three four zero zero. It's, they're all the same kit. That's the number that Messick's provided. That's the number that my local dealers, you know, supplied. And I'm gonna pick this O-ring out of here. Unfortunately, the O-rings that come in the kit are not the right size. Now, are these cylinders part of the new lot? That somebody broke them all and put them on this tractor. Hell, am I going to get to the other two that are still on the tractor and they're going to be different? I don't know. I took this thing to work. We threw it on the chart. And an O22 O-ring is 1 inch ID by 16th wall thickness by 1 and an eighth OD. And if we measure this, well, I mean, I'll put a little spring on it there. 066. This is an 063. Look at that. Light pressure up in the flat. 066. So, and I believe it's one inch. I mean, heck, that bearing in there said SKF one inch. And this drops it virtually right on top of the, the 022 on the chart. So, I ordered some. Not through any tractor company. I went on Amazon, as a matter of fact. I tried the local hardware store. I have a really good local hardware store. As a matter of fact, they had numbers 21, 20, and 26. They like they skipped 22, 23, 24, and 25. But for whatever reason, I don't understand. It's not like that out of all of a thing. You know, if it was 1 and a 16th, I'd be like, man, it's, it's crazy. But it's a 1-inch ID. And actually, it's like, according to McMaster, it's like a point... 9.8 OD. Uh, sorry, ID. So, now our 9.95. Something close. So, so you know it's going to seal off on a one inch shaft, which is all we're really looking for. So, I'm going to put the bigger one away. Just to not get it confused. And, we're back with these. So, so that's a brief parts breakdown um, of, of the order here. Um, I am, as we speak, waiting for the O-rings to be delivered. So, uh, it's I'm eight stops away, according to Amazon. 
Uh, I'm not going to hold them to it, nor am I going to go audit it. But uh, I will let this one sit in the correcting jig for now. And when they get here, we're going to hope that my measurement's laid out and that I can drop an O-ring in here. And I'll show you how to put it back together. Until then, we'll talk to you later. And here we go. Guess what happened in the meantime? Amazon came. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, yes, I already cut it over and I have not gotten any further than that. <gasps> Amazon, lovely thing, huh? All right, what do we got here? I'm going to be honest, I'm not like super. Well, okay, well, let's try to see a supply company. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You know, anybody who puts a cell phone number on, it's got my bid. You know why? Because that sounds like customer service. Might go to a dead end, too. I don't know, but who knows? So let's see what he got here. Oh, gee. Yeah, welcome, happy to help, blah, blah, blah. Wow. I'll write a product review, a bunch of shells for it. So. Anyway, darn Amazon, I can't believe they actually bailed me out. I went to, like, I had a really, I have a really good hardware store near work. Oh, I don't like these. Ah, they're a little soft. You know what, I bet you the, these are mediums. If I was doing it over again, I'd order hard ones. Depends on how this goes in here. There's a fair chance I might end up holding new ones. And again, I don't want to. I don't want to have to do this more than once. So, what you think? 70s would be soft. Oh no! You're like literally seeing the failure happen in real time. Okay. Let's try to get this in here. I got no good leg to stand on. Oh. Okay. They're going to weasel this guy in here. Oh, it does fit, though. Okay. Well, make sure there's no, you know, there's like dead bugs stuck in this thing and stuff. I'm normally putting hydraulic, not hydraulic, but like hoses on boats and, you know, things like that together. But it went in. So this is a static O-ring. Static means it's not moving all over the place. Because of that and the fact that it does fit and that I have a hundred of them sitting here means this is probably going back together. I would have liked to have seen those a harder durometer. If this clicks on here, we're good. Oh. Yep, that's the ticket right there. All right. Oh, hoo -hoo. absolute rookie. Total rook move here. I had to smoke that nut down on there. And uh, guess what we missed? Gland nut. All right. Uh, so. Got the shaft. Gland nut. Carefully slide it in here. Oh, it's a nice tight fit. And there we go. This shaft was 40 thousandths. 40 thousandths out of, out of round. Um, I just want to put a little, little, little lube on there. No reason to run dry seals around. Not savages now. All right. Here, we have the O-ring. The other one's in the closing jig, or the correcting jig. I'm going to slip this on here. What a nice fit. Totally down for that. Nut. What do we got here? Place on here. I'm looking for the torch. I did this, like I said, ran it between two V blocks. This thing was 40 thou out. Took it to work, shot pressed it, got it within 5 thou. Um, and they're looking at. Nine thou here is the allowable. Um, I ran this one through. It was it was about eight. So I'm just gonna let that one that one ride somewhere here. There is tightening torque. Boom cylinder. Why? That's crazy. I don't understand. And what I'm confused about is boom cylinder piston nut and bucket cylinder piston mounting nut. Uh, 
on the LA-301. Oh, well, maybe not. Here, okay. All right, it's making more sense now. LA-301, 125 to 135 foot-pounds. And then down here, 301, 125. Yeah, I was going to say, they're the same cylinder. Why would this be any different if not? But let's go grab the torque wrench. Mounting so mounting pin on the ground. All right, now I'll zero that out. Let's go put this thing in the vise. Torque one of these down, and then I can get inside, watch my daughter, and get on with the day. All right, in the vise down here. Sorry. Yeah, I got I got a mile to go. Pardon the camera for a second. One. All right, snugged up. I'm gonna give it one little bit. And we'll jump on the old torque wrench here. The old zero. It's kind of hard to see, but. I'm going to be shooting for 125 on this. Here we go. Alright. Heck. It's really hard to like see this and get it and film it. <clears throat> okay, right there. That one's not coming apart. So here we go. Got this. Pardon the messy garage. It's a rainy week. So I'm going to try to get all these things done. We'll get back to the correcting jig in just a second. So I'm hoping this kind of just slides up in there. But if not, I'll stick the correcting jig back on it. There is a fairly nice lead in right here. And just like before, a little lube doesn't hurt. Okay. So, piston goes in. I don't want to catch the freaking towel on it. We're going to give it a last double check here. Just to make sure. Nothing is on the seals, because I don't want to be fiddling with it in a second. So we'll guide that in. I really don't want to drag the seal on anything. That one's getting kind of tight. Stand this thing up now. Here we go. Well, I don't know if I'd recommend that. But I'll tell you what, it's in. Yeah, it doesn't feel that bad either. Okay. They don't say it. I don't know. But I'm going to put a little never sees on this. You know, I don't even know if I've ever taken apart a bolt that, I've, that I personally have never seized. But I'll tell you what, somebody somewhere is going to get a whole handful of cars. There's an 88 Ranger, a 98 Ranger, an 09 Ranger, Silverado, plenty of other little projects. But all, anything I've touched, I put never sees on. Somebody may never see them again, but I'll know if they do. They're not going to struggle nearly as bad as I did. Double part. Oh, there's guys. I, you know what? I've taken brakes off my own truck before. So I have to have done that. Alright. I'm going to get it close here. Oh, here we go. So, I got down to the O-ring. I'm bringing it pretty close. Let's snap this guy on here. 
Uh, I'm going to be tightening. I don't even know if it matters. Maybe, maybe not. Back to the vise. There's only two of them. Yee. Come on, here we go. Alright, that's fairly close. I'm gonna hold it in there. Stick the old breaker bar on it. Oh, bring it down snug. And of course it fell off, so I'll re-grab. As a matter of fact, this top pin's fallen out, which means the bottom one can't be too far off. Because they... Alright. Let me just take this guy over to the bench. Okay. Pull out. Push back in. Yeah, like I said, you heard it clank. Look at that. There's this much exposed exposed rod end down here, so if you had to, you'd probably clamp on that. Let me put nary a whiff of rightfully so, this should all get ripped off, right? Yep, look at that. Totally left. That's it good and clean. All right. Of course, I got junk in my wiper seal, which is just going to promote dirt adhesion and wear out the seal quicker. I'll give these a good wash down. I thought about putting the O-ring on there. A lot of people, you know, you ever see a cylinder with an O-ring? Just kind of chilling down here. You're like, what the heck is that for? Well, word on the street is, they just put it on there when they paint it. They don't want to paint in here. So you slide the cylinder all the way down to the end wherever the O-ring stops. You know, not only is that the end of your stroke, but it's also it keeps the paint from getting all over the wiper. So, all right. Aside from the hiccup that Kubota sent me the wrong O-ring for that, um, I'm actually quite pleased with it. It went in, didn't tear any seals quite yet. It's not that I know of until I put these things back together and you guys never see this video again. But... Weird ghost in the garage or something, or a very overfilled empties bin. 